Hey Brockton, I'm on a mission to strengthen our city by helping every business in Brockton get online. 97% of internet users look for goods and services online, but 58% of businesses don't have a website. Businesses that are online are expected to grow 40% faster and are twice as likely to create jobs. That's huge for small businesses and huge for Brockton. So join me and let's get our city's businesses online because stronger businesses build a stronger Brockton and the web can help. Let's go Brockton, get your business online. and welcome to this week's edition of Shoe City Scoop. I'm your host, Mayor Bill Carpenter. This week, we'll take you out on the road visiting young people in several different locations across the city. First, I took a trip to the Brockton Day Nursery where I had a chance to sit with a classroom of young people who had some tough questions for me. Honey, you make a law of that. Like, you can make, like, if the, te if the teachers didn't live in Brockton, then they couldn't, like, be a teacher? No. Actually, mm -hmm. it's just the opposite. The, the law actually says that you can't make teachers live in the city they teach in. Right. Yeah, people, mm -hmm. teachers get to choose where they want to live. Mm -hmm. But I like it when teachers live in Brockton. Mm -hmm. so, they can, so they can be a teacher? I like it best when teachers are from Brockton, when teachers are kids like you that grow up to become school teachers and decide to come back and teach in Brockton. That's what we need more young people to do. How about this? Can you guys share with the mayor about anything, any dreams that you guys would like to be? President. President. <laughs> Does Obama know about this? No. Uh, all right, he'll probably be long gone by the time you're ready for your <laughs> What do you want to be, sweetheart? A nurse. A nurse? Mm -hmm. Wanda, what grade are you in now? Third. Third. Oh, you've got a little ways to go. So you're going to have to concentrate on science and math if you want to be a nurse, right? What are you going to be? Mayor of Massachusetts. Mayor. Okay, we're well, going to be mayor of the city. You can be mayor of Brockton because how old are you now? Twelve, yeah. So mm -hmm. by the time you're ready to run for mayor, I'll be old and retired, so I might even vote for you. <laughs> so do you guys have any questions for the mayor about yeah, what he does? Have a question about uh, City Hall? Mm -hmm. or I can't tell. I've only been the mayor for six weeks, so I don't know how much I can actually tell you, but <laughs> I'll try. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. How many rooms would the City Hall have? Wow. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> now, nobody's supposed to know the answer to that. Yeah. Okay. Now, <laughs> Because Nubi is our communications director, so I'll whenever I know the answer to questions. Years. Yeah, it's a lot. Over it's a great thing. <laughs> Maybe we can arrange a tour of City Hall sometime. We can have you guys come oh, over. There we go. That would be really nice. Because there's actually there's a lot of history over That would be Hall. wonderful. I Matter of fact, I'm still learning that. the history mm -hmm. of City Hall. We have someone coming that used to work with Mr. Lucas. Mr. Lucas, you can help me here, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> see, is Mr. <laughs> Lucas worked at City Hall for a lot longer than I have so far. Mr. Lucas worked for Mayor Units for how many years? Two. Only two. Only two, is that right? Before going on to law school and becoming a famous attorney. Yeah. I have two. Is the state Two? Wait a minute. Is the city hall a mansion? No, because you don't live there. So I think for it to be a mansion, you have to live there. But oh. it's as nice. It's as, It's more like a castle. I call it the castle. Mm -hmm. It's more like a castle. Do you have to pay for city hall just to like stay there? Or just like that? Well, you mean to go there? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, go there. Oh, no, no. Anyone. It's a public building. It's owned by the people. I, I just get to have an office there. It's owned by all the people who live in the city of Brockton own it. So during the hours we're open, 8.30 to 4.30, anybody can come into City Hall. We're actually going to work on trying to make it easier to come into City Hall and make it more friendly. We're working on some new changes you'll see very soon coming out to make it a little more friendly to people who want to visit City Hall. I do. <laughs> big flat screen. Nice big flat screen. Yeah, it's one of the perks of being mayor. The only the only problem with it, but the only thing I ever watch on it is city council meetings, and it's, that's not all that good. But maybe during Red Sox, when the Red Sox start playing pretty soon, maybe I'll sneak Nesson on there once in a while if I'm in there working at night. I can catch a little of the ball game while I'm working. You're not supposed to watch the TV? Huh? No, I think, I think I'm the boss. I think I can watch the TV if I want to. Yeah. I'm the hottest working guy in the building. If I want to watch a little TV, it's okay. Can you imagine? No, are you kidding? I live in a Campanelli. 
Are you kidding me? You know what Campanelli Ranch? I have no idea what that is. You don't know what a Campanelli is? You know what ranch? You know the ranch? One, half the city of Brockton is those, like Brookfield. Anyone live in Brookfield? No? So you know the houses that are just one, one, one floor? We've got hundreds and hundreds around the city. The one story houses. Yeah. What did you do to, like, what were your speeches like on what did you do to, like, get elected? Oh, boy, it's a long story. It's a year of my life. It's a tough question. It's a year of my life. I guess we have what's called a campaign when there's an election and the people that want to run are on the campaign. So it started off with four people running. And then we had a preliminary election that narrowed it down to two. And then there was the mayor and I. And then in the final election, I was fortunate enough to get a few more votes. Did you have so to I pass up, the next like, mayor. stuff to make people, like, brownies? Yeah, Abs not you? brownies. I, you know what I did for about eight months is I walked up, uh, up and down streets knocking on people's doors at their houses, introducing myself to them. What are you doing on Saturday nights? Well, I'm going to be at West Middle School playing basketball from 6 to 10 for March Madness. And it's only a dollar. Back to you, Bill. Thanks, Travis. I'm Mayor Bill Carpenter, and I look forward to seeing you on Saturday nights during the month of March for March Madness at West Middle School from 6 to 10 p.m. Hey Brockton, I'm on a mission to strengthen our city by helping every business in Brockton get online. 97% of internet users look for goods and services online, but 58% of businesses don't have a website. Businesses that are online are expected to grow 40% faster and are twice as likely to create jobs. That's huge for small businesses and huge for Brockton. So join me and let's get our city's businesses online because stronger businesses build a stronger Brockton and the web can help. Let's go Brockton, get your business online. Welcome back to Shoe City Scoop. I'm your host, Mayor Bill Carpenter. Recently, we celebrated Dr. Seuss birthday in the Brockton Public Schools by participating in Read Across America. I had the opportunity to read to young people in four different Brockton elementary schools. Come along with me. Why are they sad and glad and bad? I do not know. Go ask your dad. Whoops. I could turn the page just the all set. This is a brand new book. It's a little slippery. There we go. Some are thin and some are fat. The fat one has a yellow hat. From there to here, from here to there, funny things are everywhere. But I actually love over there. Yeah. One is thin and one is fat. And the fat one, what color hat is the fat one wearing? Yellow. Yeah. Yeah. This is a blue one. A blue fish with a yellow hat. No. Here are some who like to run. They run for fun in the hot, hot sun. Here's some running for fun. He has 11. Bump, bump, bump. Did you ever ride a wump? We have a wump with just one hump. But we know a man called Mr. Gump. Mr. Gump has a seven hump wump. So if you like to go bump, bump, just jump on the hump of the wump of Gump. He has a seven hump wump. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven umps. Well, I guess the back one didn't count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 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 I'm pretty sure it's seven. <laughs> Who am I? My name is Ned. I do not like my little bed. This is no good. This is not right. My feet stick out of bed all night. See how tall he is for his bed? His feet stick out all night. And when I pull them in, oh dear, my head sticks out of bed up here. And he pulls his feet in one and his head sticks out the other. We like our bike, it is made for three. Our mic sits up in back, you see. 
We like our Mike, and this is why. Mike does all the work when the hills get high. What happens when they have to go uphill? He helps. Mike, Mike gets out helps. and pushes. Hello there, Ned. How do you do? Tell me, tell me, what is new? How are things in your little bed? What is new? Please tell me, Ned. I do not like this bed at all. A lot of things have come to call. A cow, a dog, a cat, a mouse. Oh, what a bed. Oh, what a house. You see all the people have come to call on. Oh dear, oh dear, I cannot hear. Will you please come over near? Will you please look in my ear? There must be something there, I fear. Say, look, a bird was in your ear. But he is out, so have no fear. Again, your ear can hear, my dear. They got the bird out of his ear. Hey, guys. Hello. How are you? How are you? That's awful tough to talk. Daisy Head Maisie by Dr. Seuss. It's hard to believe such a thing could be true, and I hope such a thing never happens to you. But it happened, they say, to poor Maisie McGrew, and it happened like this. I'll do my best to turn it around after each page, okay? She was sitting one day at her desk in her school in her usual way, when she felt a small twitch on the top of her head. So Maisie looked up, and she almost dropped dead. Something peculiar was going on there. A daisy was sprouting right out of her hair. Do you see that? It's a daisy sprouting right out of her hair. Behind her was sitting young Herman Butch Stro Strudel. We'll try that again. Behind her was sitting young Herman Butch Strudel. This looks like a daisy up here on her noodle. It doesn't make sense. Why, it couldn't be so. A noodle's no place for a daisy to grow. Then up spoke another boy, Einstein von Tass, the brightest young man in the whole of the class. It's a very odd place to be sprouting a daisy, but nevertheless, one is growing on Maisie. Hey, look at cried Butch, right here in this room, Daisy had Maisie, she's bursting in bloom. Everybody see what's happening? What's going on there? Right out of her head. I've never heard of such a thing. Miss Sneetcher, the teacher, came rushing up quick. Such nonsense, some child here is playing a trick. Which one of you boys stuck that thing in her hair? You know that a daisy could never grow there. But teacher, said Butch, I saw the thing rise right out of her head with my very own eyes. Just give it a yank if you think I tell lies. So who's that checking everything out now? Who's that? Who's that? Teacher. Um, the teacher. The teacher coming over to see what's going on with this daisy. But Miss Sneetcher had heard quite enough of this talk. Maisie, hold still. Let me get at that stock. Ouch, hollered Maisie. Quit yanking, Butch said. You're giving her pains. I'll bet that those roots go way down in her brains. The kids in the class started shouting like crazy. Daisy head, Daisy head, Daisy head, Maisie. Children, be quiet, good grief and alas. Miss Sneetcher was shocked by the noise in her class. I've taught in this room 20 years, maybe more, but I've never seen anything like this before. I'll have to report it. You'll just have to come to the principal's office and show Mr. Grum. So now she's going to bring her where? Down to the principal's office. Not usually the place you want to go, huh? Now the principal, good Mr. Gregory Grum, was a very wise man, just as smart as they come. He knew more than anyone else in this nation about long division and multiplication. He knew all the answers, why oceans are deep, why skies are so high, and why mountains are steep. He should have the answer to this thing on Maisie. My word, he declared, it's a genuine daisy. I've seen them quite often in the fields growing wild, but never before on the head of a child. Now what in the world ever made this thing sprout? I have no idea, 
but I'm going to find out. So everyone see now? Here's the principal, Mr. Grum. And he's checking out exactly what's going on with this daisy growing out of Maisie. That's right, exactly. Okay. It says here, it says daisies grow on the land. They grow between rocks, they grow also in sand. It mentions right here they can grow in a pot, but mention the head of a girl, it does not. Daisies, it says, sometimes grow in Alaska. Also, Missouri, Rhode Island, Nebraska. Hey guys, wow. Boy, this is a lot of fresh you guys are sitting here all waiting for. Oh boy. It's going to be a great time. Good morning. Do you know who this is? Yeah. There you go. Thank you. And remember that life's a great balancing act. Just never forget to be dexterous and deft, and never mix up your right foot with your left. And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and 3 quarters percent guaranteed. Kid, you'll move mountains. What's he doing in the picture? Moving a mountain. So be your name Buxbaum or Bixby or Bray, or Mordecai Ali Van Allen O'Shea. You're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. What do you think? Pretty good story? Yes. Means you can do anything as possible, right? Anything you want to do, you set out to do, you can absolutely achieve. What are you doing on Saturday nights? Well, I'm going to be at West Middle School playing basketball from 6 to 10 for March Madness. And it's only a dollar. Back to you, Bill. Thanks, Travis. I'm Mayor Bill Carpenter, and I look forward to seeing you on Saturday nights during the month of March for March Madness at West Middle School from 6 to 10 p.m. Hey, Brockton. I'm on a mission to strengthen our city by helping every business in Brockton get online. 97% of internet users look for goods and services online, but 58% of businesses don't have a website. Businesses that are online are expected to grow 40% faster and are twice as likely to create jobs. That's huge for small businesses and huge for Brockton. So join me and let's get our city's businesses online because stronger businesses build a stronger Brockton and the web can help. Let's go Brockton, get your business online. During my four years serving on the Brockton School Committee, reopening of the planetarium at Brockton High School was a priority. Two years ago, as chair of the Facilities Committee, we began the project of reopening the planetarium at Brockton High School. Today, I'm pleased to announce, thanks to some great work by Mr. Jonathan Shapiro, the Science Department Head at Brockton High School, uh, we have been able to secure a $100,000 grant from the 3M Corporation to install new technology at the planetarium. With the support of Superintendent of Schools Kathy Smith and in a partnership with the Brockton Public Schools, we will now be able to completely renovate, refurbish, and install new technology at the planetarium at Brockton High School. talking about a complete, it's not just the technology that's being replaced, but we're actually going to refurbish the, the inside of the planetarium. We are. As you can see, it's taken its toll over the last 40 years, yeah. and it certainly has provided a lot of great opportunities over that time, but it's now out of date, and as you can see, a lot of the chairs are broken, and the paint mm -hmm. doesn't look like it's in great quality, um, so the district is going to help provide um, furniture, rug, new paint of the dome. There's some watermarks on that that you can yeah. see. Um, so essentially, in, in addition to bringing in this exciting new technology, it'll also be completely refurbished so that the facility itself will be brand new to, to also uh, go with the new technology. Well, one of the things that's exciting about that process is we actually have a student here at the high school uh, who's working on, is, who's going to be helping us with it as he works to get his Eagle Scout. Wow, that's great.
That's great. So, yeah. so there's even a little community service added to it. That's great. One of the comments I made earlier was uh, in my earlier years teaching as a fourth grade teacher, every fourth grade would come to the planetarium. Right. And that was really the highlight of their fourth grade experience. So it's just great to be back in here thinking the kids will have these opportunities. Yeah, we can't wait to bring them back to them again. Yeah. Well, so obviously your focus primarily is how you incorporate this into the science curriculum at the high school. But superintendent, I feel the same way because I also remember the planetarium being open to the public like once a yes. month it would be open to the public. So this really is an opportunity that goes beyond just Brockton High School students, but the chance for younger ages for these other schools to bring field trips over here. And also hopefully we'll work out a, a schedule to periodically open it up to the public so that the, the up, residents of the city can come enjoy it. You bring up a good point because one of the things as director of community schools, people always asked because there had been a course. Right. But there had been an opportunity for the adults in the community to come in and enjoy the planetarium. So I'm sure we can work very closely with community schools and set up yeah. time to have access. Uh, and this is something, and it's just uh, the work that Mr. Shapiro has done in securing the grant is, is great, and, and we congratulate you. Because I know that on the school committee, on the facilities committee, a couple of years ago, we took a long look at this. And clearly the need was here. But, you know, with the budget constraints nowadays, you know, we just couldn't find the money in the budget to do it. And, and we felt at the time that the, the only way this would ever get done is if we could find a grant partner to partner with us. And, and so the work that you've done in securing that, that grant partnership with uh, 3M Corp is, is great. And we want to thank you and congratulate you well, for thank that. Thank you. And 3M has really been a terrific partner. Um, and what you're talking about with the community and whether it be the fourth grade or fifth grade or the adults, all of that impacts what we do here as well. So it's going to be a great instructional tool but it also is going to be absolutely instrumental in helping to increase the STEM culture in the community. So we're yeah, really excited about great. that angle. And so, prepare our students for right. their testing. Absolutely. So Superintendent, could you just, you know, Mr. Shapiro mentioned STEM. For the average person, doesn't know what STEM, what STEM is all about. So if you could talk a little bit about that and really the emphasis you've placed on this now uh, as superintendent around science and technology. Well, again, STEM is science, technology, uh, envi is it environmental math? Engineering. Engineering and mathematics. Yeah. And uh, you're right. I mean, with the testing coming down, whether it's MCAS with the science, you know, uh, testing, whether it's the park coming on board, we've made it a focus from the time the children are entering school. Uh, right now, we actually just had an initiative at the Huntington School. And, you know, the principal there wanted to make sure that the Huntington School had, you know, a lab set up for students and opportunities for a lot of STEM initiatives. They're working with Bridgewater State University. So this is something we're obviously unrolling from the time the children are little. Uh, coming up to the high school, Mr. Shapiro has done an excellent job. You know, the biotech lab, you know, bringing back the planetarium. You know, out there actively searching for, and there are a lot of grants out there where STEM right now is the focus of many of our schools. Well, I think also as we talk about preparing Brockton High students for 21st century careers, you know, we really think about, even from the city side, I think about, you know, industry that we want to develop around Brockton. You know, you're talking about biotech, healthcare. I mean, some really, uh, some exciting fields that are career opportunities for Brockton kids after graduation, but built around science, technology, and math, that, that we've got to give them the type of uh, mm -hmm. background in these areas that will allow them to compete uh, coming out of Brockton. I High. love hearing you say that, Mia Carpenter, because we just had one of our first meetings mm -hmm. to develop our strategic plan from all of the mm -hmm. transition team planning. We spent a whole day uh, the other day at the Keith Center. We probably had about 25 administrators from all levels, and that was the talk about college and career. Right. So to hear you tie that in with a STEM focus or talking about us as a community with businesses yeah. and having our students placed, you know, early in internships, you know, doing service out in the community. Uh, that's certainly all going to be tied to our new vision, our mission, and we're very excited going forward. Yeah, that's great. So, Mr. Shapiro, can you give us a little uh, insight as to what the capabilities of the of the planetarium will be when? Uh, well, first of all, when, when are we hoping to get this project done? You're just getting started now, so. You know, realistically, is this something we can have online for the next school year? Absolutely. We're looking to complete it in August. So it just it was perfect timing to get it on online for the next Absolutely. school year. Absolutely. And this, I guess, from the science department uh, perspective, gives you a chance to 
incorporated into the curriculum for the next school year. Right. We can get some people trained on how to use the new system because its, it's capabilities are beyond what one can imagine. Uh, and I don't say that lightly. I don't say that about anything because I have, as, as we all do, we have great imaginations. And this, as we've been looking at what these systems can do, it, it can bring us into, well, if we look at the old planetarium style, yeah. we can see the close stars, you know, the close yeah. aspect of the galaxy. Yeah. This can bring us out of our own galaxy into wow. the rest of the universe. Wow. And wow. deep inside the Earth. Yeah. And into the cells and molecules and beyond, because it's all digital, it's anything that we can imagine. And so it can bring us even beyond the sciences into the arts and humanities. And I think that we can do a lot of really great cross-curricular work like that. Wow, that's, that's exciting. Huh? So Brockton residents won't have to go to the Omni Theater in places anymore. They can, they can be able to right put, on some, put on some demonstrations here at, at the high school. Absolutely. Yeah. What do you think going back you know, 42 years ago, or even before that when you talk about the planning, was that something unusual in a high school to have a planetarium? You know, I have so much respect for the people who designed this building. The fact that they put in a planetarium in 1971 was really incredible, and it was state of the art. And we got a lot of great use out of it because, as you know, I hear the same thing that you say all the time. People are constantly telling me, I remember when I was in third grade or fourth grade or fifth grade, and the planetarium was the highlight. And when can we do that again? And I, and I remember a couple of years ago, I yeah. talked to you and the rest yeah. of the school committee, and I brought you in here, and I said, right. look, at, this is what we can do with this now. Right. right. And we took out some iPads and said, this is right. the technology in the students' hands. Yeah. Well, now, we've, now we can bring that all onto this immersive screen. Yeah, yeah. And I want to thank our Deputy Superintendent, Mike Thomas, who works very closely with yeah. our facility department. They've done such great work. I mean, we look at the Barrett Russell School last year, uh, just a wonderful new school for our little kids, so I'm really excited this summer yeah. know, to see the focus here, and uh, it'll be fun to come in here next August. And yeah, we're going to have yeah, we'll make sure we get some, some good shots of what the planetarium looks like today mm -hmm. so that we can come back in September and then show everyone what the all-new planetarium looks I like. I can't wait to welcome you back when yeah. it's complete. That'd be great. That'll just about do it for this week's edition of Shoe City Scoop. Thanks for joining me. Hey, if you have a question or a comment for the mayor, please send me an email to the mayor's mailbag at mayorbillcarpenter at gmail.com. Mayorbillcarpenter at gmail.com. And your question or comment may make it on to a future edition of the show. Be sure to join us for our next edition of Shoe City Scoop. You can find us right here on BCA Channel 12 or online at youtube.com slash Mayor Bill Carpenter. Thanks for watching. Hey Brockton, I'm on a mission to strengthen our city by helping every business in Brockton get online. 97% of internet users look for goods and services online, but 58% of businesses don't have a website. Businesses that are online are expected to grow 40% faster and are twice as likely to create jobs. That's huge for small businesses and huge for Brockton. So join me and let's get our city's businesses online because stronger businesses build a stronger Brockton and the web can help. Let's go Brockton, get your business online. on Saturday nights. Well, I'm going to be at West Middle School playing basketball from 6 to 10 for March Madness. And it's only a dollar. Back to you, Bill. Thanks, Travis. I'm Mayor Bill Carpenter, and I look forward to seeing you on Saturday nights during the month of March for March Madness at West Middle School from 6 to 10 p.m.